The tinnitus started, well, I started becoming aware of the ringing in my ears, which was intermittent, quite a long time before I sort of became aware that it was a persistent, intrusive problem. Um, so I'd have the ringing and it would then go away and I didn't think anything of it. Um, but the, there was, well, I, I, I can name the incident. I was flying back from a flight to Switzerland um, and I got off the flight, it was very late at night and my tinnitus, the ringing in my ear, just from that point on seemed never to stop. Well, I, w I would say <coughs> as it went on, it, it had more and more of an impact and, and in some ways that was the reason for seeking treatment because I, f I felt first of all that it was a, a, an uncomfortable noise. I mean having a persistent noise is not necessarily in its own right a bad thing but this felt hard and intrusive and not being able to get rid of it particularly when you're trying to go to sleep or when you're tired or when you're stressed. The other part of my life that I found it really interfered with was um, being able to sleep so it was if I'd wake up for any reason or got disturbed in my sleep for any reason um, I find it very hard to go back to sleep and so you know months and months of sleep deprivation plus this sort of general anxiety which was building up made quality of life pretty pretty down really it's a bit like I suppose the analogy would be you know, someone in chronic pain where you just it's so much worse, not because the pain is particularly bad, but, but it's the, the knowledge that it's never going, to, never going to end. As opposed to, you know, pain from an operation or childbirth pain, you know it's going to come to an end. And so it might be painful, but it becomes a lot more bearable. And that's the analogy I draw with the tinnitus. It's just the constancy of it was just so draining physically. It just really... You just, you know, occasionally I just lose it. I mean, my poor children were, <laughs> sometimes, which, which yeah. you know, they they often got got the the blunt end of it. You know, after a hard day at work, when I come home and you know the kitchen was a mess, and I just go bananas, <laughs> which is not which is something I normally wouldn't do, just because of this sort of additional stress. I chose this particular route because it had a scientific basis. So. I mean, I, I'm a scientist, so I have access to all the scientific literature. So I started Googling tinnitus to basically see if there's anything out there. And I came across a nature paper where there were some preliminary animal experiments which suggested that tinnitus could actually be, be modulated or treated. So I thought, well, this is interesting. And, you know, as a scientist, there's, there's so many quack treatments out there you know therapies and you know herbs and you, you you go on the websites and you see all this stuff and you just know that it's it's somebody making a lot of money but this was different because there did seem to be a scientific basis and then I found the papers the, the preliminary papers from the group in Germany who had actually developed the technique and well you know I thought give it a go I've got nothing to lose so it, it was because there was si proper science behind it, that was the reason that I chose this route. Because it's relaxing, I would have to say that from a sort of an emotional point of view, there was some relief straight away. But in terms of whether the tinnitus actually changed straight away, it's hard to say. That probably took a little bit longer for there to be a real change in the, both the frequency and the intensity of the tinnitus tone. It's hard to remember what the tinnitus was like at the start, but I do remember it as being a really hard sound. Hard to the point that it felt metallic, almost to the, that I could almost taste a um, sort of metal in my mouth. You know, it was, a, it was a really, really a sort of psychosomatic event going on. Uh, and I guess, you know, that metal taste could have been cortisol, it could have been actually a you know, physical response actually to the stress that the tinnitus um, induces. So I, I don't have that anymore and that's something that went within the first few weeks of, of, of the treatment. That sort of really in, invasive, sort of all in well, overwhelming um, physical side effects of the tinnitus. I think over time, the I know over time the tinnitus reduced in intensity and then after that I began to feel that I was really making progress in terms of actually reducing the tinnitus. So there are two phases to the treatment. The first is the initial engagement with the treatment and having 
something that worked and that that for me personally gave me a very positive feel and the second was that sort of continuum of the treatment where as as I went every four weeks or every two weeks or whatever began to realize that the tinnitus was actually changing and that the treatment was working my sleep is definitely much better so when I first came for the treatment I was probably waking up eight nine times a night and I was pretty exhausted all the time. And I like my sleep. I like my eight hours. And so that was, you know, one of the worst things to deal with. My, you know, one of my luxuries was going to bed and just having a good eight hours sleep. And I wasn't getting it. So that was the thing that I noticed changed most and changed fastest was, was that ability to sleep better, not wake up so often. And if I did wake up, not lie awake listening to the tinnitus, but being able to go straight back to sleep. So that was, that was brilliant. And then being able to concentrate at work as well. Um, you know, I felt, because I, I was having difficulty doing the jobs where you have to sit quietly and think and read, that was what was getting hard. And that's a big part of my job and, you know, success in terms of my profession. And that was something that w the tinnitus really disrupted. And I got back the ability to sit quietly and read and concentrate and actually focus on what was on the paper and not what was the noise that was going on in my ear and in my brain.